Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 4. Today we we're going to be doing my review for Episode 13 of Season 4, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode I was very excited for, and I would say it delivered, and I really did enjoy it. But there was a few bits in the episode, as per usual, that I wasn't so sure about. We'll talk about that later in the episode. Just kind of some small nitpicks and that's about it, but yeah, very interesting. Again, we didn't have any Red Daughter stuff, so that's kind of sad, but Melissa did tease recently that there's going to be a massive Red Daughter episode, so look forward to that. And so yeah, let's go, oh, so let's go ahead, sorry, and get right into this and just talk about it. So first off, I would just like to quickly mention, it was amazing in the intro when you know they do the different specific scenes from past episodes and it's sort of like a recap before the episode starts we get a clip of the legion of superheroes with mon el satin girl and brainy it was just really nice to see it because so far i don't think mon has been even referenced once this season and neither has satin girl and i believe this was the first time we've referenced the legion because later in the episode, there's quite actually a decent amount of talk to do with the Legion. So, slowly, they're kind of remembering, I'm talking about the writers here, that, oh, the Legion did exist, mon did exist. And so, I just really appreciated that in this episode. And also, there was mention of Rain, finally. Like, he's barely been mentioned at all. So, that was really nice. So, a few things that I just liked. Like, a few episodes ago, they mentioned Wynn for, like maybe the second time in the season i don't know it's just kind of frustrating when especially supergirl has this habit of forgetting things that happened in past seasons so yeah it was just kind of satisfying for me and so nia and brainy in this episode have a decently big part and is more into a superhero role as they train together in the fortress of solitude which was really nice to see i did like those training fight scenes a lot and so it's we get these scenes with Brainy and Kallax, which are really interesting because, I don't know, I get the feeling that Brainy can somehow talk and get inside Kallax because they are, because he's not, you know, 100% human and Kallax is a robot, so they have some sort of relationship and I really appreciated that in this episode. And so, earlier in the episode, Manchester Black breaks out of prison with the hat and menagerie, and so this is where I get to one of my nitpicks, so, the hat. I like his character, but god damn, his accent is utter shit. It is worse than Amunet Black, and you know how critical I am of Amunet Black's accent because it's terrible, but the Hat's accent was on edge unbearable. Just for, you know, showcase of, you know, his accent's supposed to be sort of like a Cockney, North London accent. I know, obviously, I'm from North London, so I know what people sound like and I know it's just a TV show and I shouldn't be nitpicking but it does annoy me when people get it wrong like he said he says prison die job instead of prison day job that's his interpretation of a London accent like a North London Cockney accent which I don't really have a North London Cockney accent I occasionally at times maybe I slip into that because I was born near there but yeah so Another thing he said, he kept on saying after, and in North London, in most parts of London, we all say after, so it just was kind of, it was very grating on my ears, and I don't know if you're English, if you guys are, I know a lot of you are Americans or from around the world, so maybe you don't notice it, maybe I don't notice it when, say, an English person's doing an American accent, I'm guessing it's the same thing, it goes both ways, but it is really grating sometimes when you hear a shit accent from an accent you always hear in your everyday life so yeah that's just a sort of nitpick that doesn't take down the episode at all just to emphasize that all right so now let's move on to the next bit and brainiac 5 in this episode he mentioned like i said earlier lots of things to do with legion because neil wants to find out about her future relative and so apparently that's been revealed i don't think they revealed that on screen that well we knew that he knew a version of Nia's descendant, or sorry, ancestor in the future. I don't know how to say it, but yeah, so he knows someone, and we knew that already. I think she's called Nura now, and she's actually Dreamer in the comics, but we have Nia for the TV show. 
and so there's some nice references there. So Nia finds out about that, and she finds out about her powers from Kalex, like what she can actually do, and we find out she's got astral projection, and Brainy's going to continue helping her to use those powers to harness them, and also there's a really nice easter egg, as they've been doing, especially in season 3 when the Legion was around, dropping these sort of teasers for different Legion members, so we got the reference to Val, Brainy's Legion friend, and that is Karate Kid in the comics, so that's a really nice sort of just nice comic book reference that they put in and I really do hope either yeah I'm probably guessing next season I really do hope the Legion returns because obviously we have Wynn returning and he's been with the Legion this whole time and if 1L eventually returns and Imra you've got to bring in the Legion and they are so interesting I'm sorry but that is more interesting than say the Children of Liberty much more interesting um so yeah, I just really like these sort of easter eggs that they put in. And so Lena and the Eve in this episode uh, transfer all their findings and research to the DEO because last episode she got confronted and she was asked to join and she said yes and then we had that terrible breakup scene with James and Lena. It was just so bad. But anyway, I know a lot of you disagree with me on that, but that's just my personal opinion. And so Alex will go on to help, as it's revealed later in the episode, because the president goes behind her back, and she doesn't agree with a lot of the stuff the president is doing, and not even Colonel Haley knew about half of this stuff that was going on, so the president's really shady. He's gonna get impeached very soon. And so, yeah, they moved into the DEO in this episode, so we'll see them a bit, a bit more, I guess, than normal. And moving on to the next bit, so the president meets Ben Lockwell, we get that really awkward, really kind of Donald Trump-esque scene at the start, sort of midway through the episode, where he goes and he thinks he's going to have a conversation, but really it's just a photo op. And then they meet again in, later in this episode, and the president after the satellites destroyed, which we'll talk about in a sec, makes Ben Lockwood the director of Alien Affairs, and so he's essentially deputising one of them to make it sort of, I guess, legal. I don't really know the ins and outs of that, but I guess that's kind of interesting, but again, I feel like, as I mentioned, they're kind of dragging things on, uh, sort of dragging them on a bit longer than they need to go, especially recently, so... I don't know, we're all just kind of waiting for Red Daughter by this point. And so Supergirl meets Manchester Black in Manchester, and you know, they got a shot from actually inside Manchester, so that's nice. And just a one little nitpick, like a continuity error, she breaks through the roof, but there is actually no rubble on the floor after, I just thought that was funny. But anyway, that doesn't matter. So. Like I said, the main sort of plot of the story later in the episode is that the satellite is in the air and it's going to shoot down any alien ships that land on Earth and it's all to protect America. And again, the president is literally only thinking of America, so I'm guessing the satellite... Well, there's only one satellite actually and it's right above the White House, so again, who cares about the rest of the world? And... So the satellite later in the episode is destroyed by Supergirl in her Power Ranger-like suit that everyone sort of hated at the start of the season. So that is back, and that was funny. I really liked that scene. I thought it was actually really visually nice. I thought the CGI was very good in that scene, and so I really liked that. Um, and now Supergirl has a fight with the president, I think either after or before that. I can't entirely remember, but she saved the White House nevertheless, and. So, now they are at odds, like they were before, but sort of more at odds because she destroyed his satellite and, you know, I don't know sort of the psychology of the president, but he's a prick, that's all I can say. And he sort of is that figure that everyone hates. I'm pretty sure all of you guys that are watching this video hate him. And so do I. And so Supergirl and Alex have these sort of nice little moments throughout the episode. There was one where Supergirl tries to convince Alex to actually help and she finally helps and that was just really nice so I'm getting the hint that Alex is probably going to remember Kara very very soon and they're going to as the end of the episode teases they're going to work together a bit more as Supergirl and Alex now because they're not at odds anymore and so 
Later in the episode, towards the end, we get a really amazing fight scene and it's Super Friends versus the Elite and there's this Supergirl Wonder Woman type fight where she's just walking and the bullets hit her and it's amazing. I love that. But yeah, so just to end off this video, a little bit that you might have missed, James at the end of the episode it seems like he's going to run a story on Lena's government project, which is kind of a oh shit moment that they sort of just implemented very subtly. And so it seems like he's going to confirm all the sources, find out all the information, and he's going to run that story. And ah, the government's going to be in trouble. That might lead to perhaps the impeachment of the president, or it might get Kona, sorry, Colonel Haley out because they're all linked to Lena's experiments and maybe that does expose Lena a lot more. Maybe Lena will get in severe trouble, but it seems like it's all sort of leading to a oh shit moment to do with the government and the president because, you know, the president is going to get impeached at some point, surely. But yeah, so this episode was really good. I really liked it. Like I said, I had some nitpicks, especially with the hats, and that is about it. So I really enjoyed the episode, I really liked the Elite apart from the Hat's accent. Um, Manchester's amazing, I really do like Manchester Black, and Alex and Supergirl were amazing as per usual, like Nia and Brainy played a small part but had some really nice scenes together. So yeah, just look forward to Red Daughter very very soon, and yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later, goodbye.